So does the rolling radius of a tyre change with pressure? This tyre is at 50 psi and it's going to rotate a certain amount of times per metre. Will that change if it's dropped down to 10 psi? Let's find out. So here's how we're going to do this. All four tyres on this car, including this one, are set to 50 psi at the moment. We've got it centred over this paint mark and I put a blue chalk mark to indicate the start of the rotation. We've got a GoPro here which is going to record what's happening with the tyre. Then we're going to drive the car in a straight line, first gear low range at idle, over to a point 50 metres away which we've measured out and there's a piece of wood so I know when to stop. Once we've done that we'll do it again at 10 psi and we'll then use the GoPro footage to take a look at, at the differences between the two and we're going to measure the ground clearance difference between 50 psi and 10 psi whilst we're at it. It's going to do a ground clearance measurement, we're going to be quite precise about this one and first thing I'm going to do is just mark the lowest point which is here with chalk and then put the jack underneath it and get that exactly lined up like so, so that's done and then well, I can't actually pull it out now so I have to back it off just a fraction there we go all right so that's now the uh, distance we want to work with now all I've got to do is put that on top of that which is a nice square base push that down and then that's our ground clearance. Okay, so you can see there 210, 220, 123, 223 millimetres ground clearance at 50 psi. Okay, so this is 50 metres and um, there's the car over there. The uh, measuring tape is a little bit squiggly but um, I can assure you we did really pull it tight when we were measuring. I'm just going, and this is the block of wood, when my wheel gets to this point I'm going to stop and just to make sure it's always consistent I'm just going to put a chalk mark in there so if that is lined up then we, we know it's consistent. Alright, I reckon time for the test. So this is the first of three runs at 50 psi, first gear low range, feet off the pedals, we'll see how many rotations we get through at the end, and I'm going to put all three 50 psi runs in the split screen, followed by all the 10 psi runs at the split screen, and then compare them. Okay, so that was the first run, um, come to a halt here, we will have counted, or we can count how many revolutions that was, but I thought I'd just make a mark um, at this point and uh, see at what point the, the tyre was touching the ground. So I've just reversed back, tried to get it in exactly the same mark and I've missed it by by that much um, and uh, you can see that the mark should be about here so I'm just fractionally off so basically going forwards and backwards has made no difference. Alright so this isn't exactly lined up just going to jack the wheel up I put the car into two wheel drive now and rotate it around so it's going to use the high lift jack to do that on the bull bar so I'll just get that in there and up we go. So high lift jack um, techniques, one is never get your hand in this point over here, don't really need to brace it but if you need to, back of the hand like that, and then never stand in this area here because that's where the handle could come down, so I'm standing to one point like that. And if the ha handle does want to fly out of my hands then I'm happy to let it do so, I'm away from the vehicle and also I'm getting maximum leverage here like so. Let me know when the wheel's off the ground. Yep. Okay, now finish with the high lift jack, so always put the handle back like that so it's safe. Now I can come around here and it's not off the ground. How's that? Okay, put that over there. There we go. All right, I reckon that's probably about good there, I reckon. Okay, so another run at 50 psi. So 
So that was the second run at 50 psi and you can see that we actually do have a difference here. So it's gone to about to there so we'll make another pink mark. All right, jacked up again so we can get that lined up exactly where it needs to be and I reckon that's looking pretty good. Okay, so I reckon um, it actually is pretty much in the middle. That's probably reasonable now. I suspect if we did another 10 runs, it would still be about there, probably. Um, so we'll run with that. Now, if there is going to be enough of a difference with 10 PSI, we should see these blue marks around here and here, or somewhere like that. And also, that should be really apparent when we run the split screen video with 10 versus 50 PSI. First split screen, and here's how I've edited it. All of the three runs start at exactly the same point, but I've changed the speed fractionally on two of them to line up with the third one so they all end at the same point, even though I tried to drive as consistently slowly as I could. So with the 50 psi runs done, we dropped the pressure to 10 psi and now we can check out the ground clearance. Okay, so ground clearance. Um, I haven't changed the jack height and look at that, you can just see how much ground clearance we've lost. It's actually really significant. Um, so that gives you an idea. So let's just take this down and use that blue mark again and see how much we've lost, which is quite a bit. Okay. Uh, I'd say that's exactly 170 millimetres, so a fairly significant loss of ground clearance down at 10 psi. So tyres down at 10 psi now, as you can see, well and truly bagged out. Those are the three marks at 50. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how different that looks with it at 10, but again, the point of the exercise isn't really to look at the marks there, it's more to look at it in the split screen, because obviously the wheel could go around completely and end up at the same mark. I don't think it's going to be that much, I reckon it's probably going to be about here or here, but I um, don't know, let's find out. Okay, so the centre mark is now here, so that's a difference. Now one point I forgot to measure um, is the fact that the distance from the centre of the tyre to the stop mark is different to what it was before, um, but even so I don't think that's going to account for that difference over here. So yeah, that's... I just can't see doing another run at 50 psi if it would have got anywhere close to that. So we're now going to back up and do another two runs and see where, where that, that comes to. Okay, so again, um, I'd say it's actually the same. It's exactly the same as it was before, and again, a difference to the 50. It, um, 
exactly the same. So interestingly, the three runs at um, 10 PSI, bang on the same, the three at 50, more variation. Interesting stuff. Okay, well, back to the editing suite and let's take a look at the split screens. So now we're going to put the 10 psi and the 50 psi together and again I've speed synced them so that they're the same duration. It's also important to note that because there's much greater rolling resistance on the 10 psi tyre, something we'll cover in a moment, I, um, the car will run slower for a given amount of revs but I've managed to synchronise the two speeds so it should be pretty much approximately the same. Stopping at the halfway mark or 10 rotations, you can see a small but noticeable difference already. Twentieth and final rotation for ten psi, but the fifty isn't quite there yet. So here's the results. We got the tire with the three marks on it, and that's our start point, and that is. Uh, the 50 psi mark 20.55 rotations and this one is the 10 psi mark 20.77 rotations that is a difference of 1.1 percent however remember that i wasn't happy with that distance being a bit different to that distance so i dropped the tires down again and actually went and measured it and i discovered that it was 70 millimeters so knowing it's 70 millimeters come back to this one again and that remains the same, 20.55, but in this case, we can only go for 20.74 rotations at 10 PSI, so that moves that yellow point to there, and that's a 0.9% difference. So that is how much the rolling resistance changes between 50 PSI, which is quite a lot for this car, and 10 PSI, which is on, on the low side. So the answer is yes, rolling resistance changes with tyre pressure, um, even at the same speed, but not enough to worry about. So, ground clearance, what did we learn there? Well, 50 psi was 223 mil, well below Ford's stated uh, clearance figure, and we dropped down to 10 psi, and that was 170 mil, and that was 25% less, or, or over 50 mil, so quite a significant uh, loss of ground clearance. Tire circumference is also interesting as well. If we just multiply out 265.7T17, we come up with a circumference of 2.25 metres, but I actually measured a car 
uh, the tyre at road pressure. What I found there was it was 2.49 metres, but that tyre's a little bit worn. And I think had it had its full tread on it, it would have been 2.54, which is actually very close to the calculated one, at least for that tyre. So interesting result there. Now we can also calculate the circumference out of the test as well. And what we find there is 2.41 and 2.43 metres for 10 and 50 psi, which is significantly less than either the measured or the calculated. And now we can take a look at rolling resistance, which wasn't part of this test, but it was part of a previous test. So this is a test I did a while back. It's a coast down test where you knock the car into neutral at 15 k's an hour in this case and see how long it takes to stop. So first off, with the tyre's recommended pressure is 28.48, it took 52 metres. Then we raised the tyre pressures to 50 at the front, 60 at the rear, and it took 61 metres, which is 17%. So that's purely less rolling resistance. Then we dropped the tyres down to 20 psi front and rear, and it only took 46 metres to stop, which is 13% less than the original run. So while reducing tyre pressures doesn't have any significant effect on the rolling radius, it does have a huge, huge effect on the rolling resistance, which is why low tyre pressures are so detrimental to fuel consumption. So three conclusions. The first one is that large tyre pressure changes do have a tiny measurable effect on rolling, rolling radius, but the change is negligible. You don't need to worry about it. Secondly, rolling resistance does dramatically increase with reduced tyre pressures, and that's why you need to look after them for fuel consumption. And ground clearance dramatically decreases with reduced tyre pressures. So I hope you found this video useful. Any questions, please drop them in the comments, and thank you for watching.